Going to try to fight the hands. There's the tap. Marvin Vittori's been waiting for it. I just trained so hard, and this is my reward. You know, that's all I want. That's my life. Marvin, the Italian dream. I put my feet here. I come to make a great show to get my bonus, to get my money. Paulo, the eraser, does ah. Welcome to UFC Unfiltered. Please tell me that's on video. I've never been happier. I'm made for a fucking podcast. That's dangerous! Listen to me, we're at it! Welcome to UFC Unfiltered. Uh, Matt and I have a great show today. I always say that hoping that we don't have a shitty show. But we have uh, Paulo Costa and Marvin Vittori both on the show. The main event uh, coming up for this Saturday. What's up, Marvin? What's up, guys? Good. How, how you doing, man? Doing great, man. Doing great. Dude, you're fucking bad. Listen, I'm always psyched when you're fighting, yeah. buddy. Always. I think you're a psychopath. <laughs> I like that, though. In a good way. You fight in a cage. It's a compliment. If you yeah, were in a couch, I'd call my couch. For sure, man. Of course. I take it as a compliment. We all are. Now, Paulo Costa, this is fucking great. This is phenomenal. Yeah. This is a great fucking fight where, or even personality wise, do you guys get, this might be a weird question. Do you guys get along? I never talked to him. I never talked to him. I don't, I don't know him personally, to be honest. But I'll let, I'll let my hand speak this time, man. I'll tell you that. What did you think of his fight without Asanya, I think he said he had an injury or something, but he was pretty dominated by Israel in that fight, um, like more so than you would have expected. He's a very good fighter. What did you think of that fight and how it ended and all the controversy after it ended? It's just, uh, it's hard to take, like, I think he just got out of class over there. And I mean, all the bullshit before, but even there, like, it's just, a, it was all a mistake after another from on his part. So, so. I mean, there's not, there's not that much to even take from that fight in a sense. Yeah. He never, he never fought like that prior. You know what I mean? You see his fight with Yo Romero, and then you're like, he, all right. But you see the same thing Yoel. with me. He's not going to fight like he ever he, he fought other fighters before with me either. Like, he always happened with me. Like, like people don't fight with me like the way they fight with other people. So... Yeah, I think that this is the this is gonna be the case for for him in this fight too. Like he's not gonna he's not gonna be able to do what he does with others, you know. And man, I'm sorry, Jimmy. No, no, no. I don't listen. We got a fight ahead of us. I don't want to dwell on shit in the past, but it isn't. I want to address it a little bit. Did you go back and rewatch? Because you're gonna meet again, I'm sure. Because you you know you are already mean, Italian absolutely. Terminator. You're gonna meet again with the champ, uh, Israel Adesanya. Did you go back and revisit and watch your fight? And in doing so, what do you what do you what do you even take from it? Now that you had time, mainly mainly I take that I will beat him and uh, and I, and that I will be the champion. That that overall is what I take because we can go into details, but I have another and I have an important fight now ahead of me, yeah. and uh, I don't want to think on that. But if I have to tell you one thing that I take from that fight is that like he didn't bring anything that I couldn't handle and. That overall really surprised me, but that's it. That that's really so. I will be the champion, and and he's not even a burden on me anymore. I just know it. I just know it to a deeper level now, and um, and that's it. Is it is it it is interesting that both of you are kind of coming off the same kind of loss. So you're both like both of you guys are very dangerous because you're both at the top of the of the pile there. The same loss though. It's not even close. Like no, you definitely lost differently. It was I mean a different. I, I mean was, the same. I was gonna say Jimmy, that's way old. No, no, but I'm saying they're both coming off a, a loss to the champ, looking to get back into that eventually uh, yeah, 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 at no, the top. Sure. So you would both be deemed as very no, dangerous. And also that, that shows like I'm four months out and and four months because. Before that title fight, I fought two months prior to that title fight. So basically, 
in seven months, I'll be, I'll, I'll be fighting three times now. But, you know, that, that to say, like, I'm back four months after, you know, uh, facing, you know, an opponent that is dangerous and uh, being fully ready for it. Uh, and this guy, you know, like, came came back after how long? Like, more than a year, you know. But it is what it is. I'm just, it's funny, like, I don't know. Maybe I even, like, changed a little bit from the last fight in a sense. Like I'm totally, I'm I'm totally confident and like more relaxed in a sense too, than the, than the last fight. So I know I will smash this guy and and that's it. There's not much else that I that I kind of want to say in a sense. What are you expecting out of him? Like, because again, he's had a while to think about it. He's seen your fight, but he hasn't fought in a while. What are you expecting? At least his his uh, goal to be obviously to beat you, but what what do you think he's gonna bring to you? Yeah, he'll come out like he'll come out like super aggressive. He'll try at least. He'll try to like you know um, come out hard, and uh, um, you know uh, get that 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 space in the octagon, and then and start to pressure forward. Um, that's it, because he, that that's his only way of that he knows of fighting in a sense too. So I mean, I'm pretty sure that's the way he'll, he'll come out. But with that being said, I. I don't think he'll be able to do that much of of, of any of, of anything that he wants to do. Well, he's got a lot of ants. He's got a lot of um, he's got to answer a lot of critics in the sense where we talked about both your, your last fights. You you pulled the trigger though. You pulled the trigger whether it was your night or not. You came to fight until the bell ended. Uh, his last fight, he can't say the same. He did not pull the trigger. He kind of froze Apollo. So we're gonna have him on soon. I'm gonna ask him about that shit too. But like. He has he has to fucking answer the call, man. Or people are gonna be like, "Hey, dude, what the fuck happened here?" You know what I mean? Everybody knows you're coming forward, Marvin. Yeah, 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 for sure. And that's why I think this 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 fight is gonna be a treat for all the fans. You know, like I, I'm not gonna step backwards, man. Like I mean, of course we all step back and we all step forward, but like I'm gonna meet him. I'm not gonna shy away from every from any confrontation, from any exchange. I'm just smarter in the way that I fight and I'm just better. And so you're going to see me, I think, picking, picking him apart. But with that being said, I'm not going to shy away from the, from the battle at all. That's what I like about this fight. Yeah. And you've indicated too, like that you wanted, you're going to talk to Paul Felder this week. When you rewatch a fight, is it different a commentator from another fighter than a commentator who's a pure commentator? Like, do you look at that differently and go like, yeah, Hey man, I wish this guy didn't say that. Or how, how do you view that? That that was a little bit of, of why I got mad, but again, you know, fuck the past. Like I'm like, I haven't even seen him yet. I'll I'll talk to him when I see him, but that's about it. I mean, it's it's, it's not like they made a big deal about it. It's it's just sometimes I don't realize that like you know shit that I say then go re get get reposted and like, but. <laughs> Yeah, it is weird, right? Like you say something just kind of off the cuff in a moment, like yeah, and then all of a sudden, like I'm eight which, months which later. I meant it. I meant it completely. And yeah, I'm, I'm not gonna take it back. It's just, you know, I, you know, I normally get into like, like, like arguments in the fighting world if I know that I can eventually fight that guy. But Paul Felder, I can't, so I'm not gonna really push it that much forward, you know. Yeah. yeah, I'm just the opposite. Like, I only want to argue with people I won't have to fight. That's how you know <laughs> that you're meant to fight when you only want to argue with people who you can actually physically fight yeah, after it's over. You know, like, what was the point, you know? I mean, yeah, I mean, you know, in this environment, I cannot fight you here, you know? So. <laughs> Marvin, let me ask you, buddy. Uh, you know, you fought for the title, and I want to ask you if you learned anything about people with that shit. Because sometimes people are riding with you and they're close with you. You're like, you're about to be champ. Shit don't go your way. Did you, did you, did anybody disappoint you after that? Did people come at you? Oh, for sure. Right? For sure. <laughs> for sure. There's been a lot of like, yeah, I mean, you know, at the end of the day, you got to know where everybody comes from. And I mean, with, with their opinion, I mean, and, uh, you know, I, you they do them and you do yourself and then eventually you know whatever they want to say they'll say and uh you know it, there's not much you can take about you got to take it a high road with it you know it's just like yeah, you know, yeah. It is. 
And yeah, you become so much higher profile in like the last year and a half. Like you were always well known, but I mean, now it's, you know, you're going to be constantly in, in talks for uh, title contention. How, how are you liking that? Does it change things for you at all? Uh, the amount of press you have to do or just the fan reaction to you? Has it, has it gotten better for you or worse? No, no, it's, man, like fans on the street and stuff like this. It's, I love it. Like they're, they're always like, I always have good, like good encounters with them. Uh, on social media, you know, it's, it is what it is. You know, a lot of people, a lot of people that are just there to like, to, to, to throw pay regardless, you know, like they'll, they'll, you'll see them in different pages on, on like talking shit on both on, on, on all of those pages, you know, it's not just about one guy. They, they're, they're, they're just there to talk shit, but you know, yeah, I mean, I, it, it, it's a whole, like, it's a whole war that like, if you let it mess with you, it'll mess with you, you know? But at the same time, you need to actually know like how much power I want to give to those people that in a sense, I don't even know at the end of the day. They're trying to tell me who I am. Shut the fuck up, I know who I am. Like, like you know, like you, you gotta, you know, at the end of the day, it's part of the, it's part of the game, but but it's, it's not the game. And it, you cannot let, let them tell you who you are and all this shit, you know? So you gotta take the high road and like, Go with the flow, you know, and that's it, I think. Have any of them said that to you in person? <laughs> like, nah. like, like the things they say on social media. Have any fans approached you in I person? Wish. And... <laughs> I wish. But it, it's yeah, that shit don't happen often. No, I guess that's why you have to take it kind of and go, yeah, it's just what it is. It's the online. It is what it is online. Yeah. Yeah, you can't let it get to you. So you've been doing well since we last uh, saw you. You seem like you're in a good place mentally and really, really ready to go. You seem uh, like you were. You seem like less even angry than the last time we talked to you. Um, you seem very calm and ready. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. I feel like I have less, yeah, less burden on my shoulder in a sense on uh, on, on a lot of levels. Like, I, I don't know that that that. I have a deeper confidence in myself, which is even crazier because people are like, oh, but you were always confident. Now even more. <laughs> now, and you feel like you're going to wind up going back to where you're going to get another title shot. You know that. It's just a matter of maybe one fight, two fights, whatever it takes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do I ask? Now, let me ask both of you guys. Sure. Should I ask Paulo Costa about that hair transplant thing or I shouldn't? Ah. <laughs> you guys didn't do that? Is that ah. Wait, did he? But wait, but did he, did he put that out publicly? No, he did oh, that? did he? As a bald man, maybe I can ask. <laughs> no. Hey, hey I'm gonna tell you one thing. One time I had to stop in Turkey and uh at the airport, and everybody in the airport, man, they were wearing this thing with all the air implant with the name of their doctor on, on the thing, you know. Oh and no. That, that's a place, Matt. That's a place you're gonna be if you if you if you're looking for it. But I think you look great like that, you know. Oh, I like though, I'm keeping this. I like this. But I'm gonna, Jimmy. We'll see. Me and Jimmy are gonna do the the paper, rock, the scissor, and we're gonna fucking figure who's gonna ask the question about the hair. Training. It looks like he's putting it on social. I'm looking at a picture now of him, um, and it looks like he put it out there. Like there's pictures of it. So I would assume. So then it's fair game, Marvin. We'll let you know how that works out. Today. Yeah. Because you never want to ask if someone doesn't want to talk about it. It's embarrassing. No. So your hair transplant. Uh, yeah, I did not this fucking hair off. <laughs> no, I'm fucking... What if Marvin hit me so hair that fucking... I was going to buy that bottle of wine too because that, that's still crazy to me. But actually, I think it happened for real. Oh, yeah, that's bad though. He didn't... Right? Wasn't he saying that he was drinking a bottle of... Why is he drinking a bottle of wine the night before he's he got a fight? Sleep, that's what he said. Oh. So make sure I bring him another one this time in case he has problems. Exactly... <laughs> From my town, from my hometown, I, I brought. I brought. I will bring him some wine. Make oh, sure he'll, make sure he's covered if he needs some tonight. Have you ever had that, Marvin, where you couldn't sleep before a fight? I imagine you guys have a million things going through your head. Have you ever had a night where you just couldn't get couldn't get knocked out? Before the fight, never, because the the night before the night before the fight, you don't really sleep much because of the wake up. So then the night before the fight, I sleep like a baby all the time. I'll do like I'll knock off like nine, ten hours. You wake up nice and refreshed. Yes. That's gotta be a shit feeling when you toss and turn, knowing you have to fight the next night. Like your adrenaline, how long can someone's adrenaline carry them in a fight? Like a round or two, maybe. That's gotta be a shit feeling. Yeah, but again, like you've got to know how to guide those that those fucking 
thoughts to the right place to then eventually like, even though maybe you can sleep because like, like ultimately you cannot control it to the fullest, the fact that you want to sleep or not, but at least you, you know, you could, you can control how to like get into the right mental state. I feel. Hey, hey Marvin, imagine Jimmy, imagine Jimmy the night before he had the fight in the cage, little Jimmy bird, Jimmy. <laughs> Dude, I'm like that the night before a flight. I don't know anything now. Like, you know, you know, diamonds are made under pressure. You might you might not know. Maybe under like the, the maximum pressure, you might just take something, smash into your face. Who knows? No, I would lay there if wide you're awake. In a fair fight with a real fighter, that's different. That's that's a fucked up situation. Yeah. Yeah. I would not, I don't, I don't, uh, handle pressure. I handle pressure. Do you ever see a rabbit when it panics? That's how I handle pressure. It's not, it's not pretty. Um, I, I, I wouldn't sleep. What does a rabbit look like when it panics? I, I just, it's not, it's very obviously fucked up mentally. It doesn't feel, it doesn't look like it's calm. <laughs> yeah. I'm amazing. You can sleep the night before a fight, but him not being able to sleep. When you hear that, do you think like, Hey, that's a good thing to know that he might have a hard time once in a while dozing off. Yes, but it could it could all be because at the end of the day, all the only thing that matters is the fight. I mean, it, it's well, how it's going to perform in the fight. So some people like, you know, it is it is a factor, but it's not. You cannot rely on that factors too much. You know, it's just it's it's a thing, yeah. But it's not like the whole the whole picture. It's like. You know, I, I I still expect the best version of himself coming out. You know, and that's what I and, and that's what I have to prepare for. That's smart, yeah. Because again, he's coming off of, like Matt said, very different than your fight. Uh, he's coming off a, a fight that's probably very very tough to get beyond mentally. You know, um, so yeah. Yeah, he may want to prove something very. I guess you're expecting him to come out pretty hot early. Yeah, but he didn't yeah. fight not because of an injury. He didn't fight for a while because of his of his hair transplant. Correct. <laughs> Yeah, before yeah, a couple people of are saying that. No, no, but it's true. He pulled out of the coming year fight because of that. Like, I mean, he was supposed to fight him, and then he actually pulled out like kind of early. Like, wasn't like a week out, but was like maybe like six weeks out. But they, I mean, they were supposed to fight at one point, and then he said no because I had a hair, a hair plan. A hair. Maybe he's looking to have a net. You know what I mean? There's something to be said for not having a net like marvin's a good looking dude but i don't think he's gonna fall back on being a model look i mean marvin's a he looks a rugged like a you know but the other guy might want to fall this this shit don't work out for him maybe he'll fall back and be a model or something yeah you're gonna do that with a fucking head like this thing he needs that <laughs> fucking flowing fucking head no, but you know like it's one of those things like when you embrace something in life you gotta embrace it to the fullest like you cannot expect like oh i'm gonna go like i'm gonna be a fighter but i'm gonna be a model like i don't then just be a model. You're right. But yeah. listen, I'm you know, these are the tough questions for him that I'm gonna ask. Yeah. Do I, listen, Marvin's made for one thing. <laughs> a fucking cage. If it was back in the fucking day in his homeland, he'll be in that Coliseum with a fucking ah, with the half armor and the fucking little sword. And a, ah, give me a fucking tiger. Give me a tiger. That's what Marvin would be. He don't even want to fight a gladiator. Give me a fucking. I don't know. Marvin, I no, can't. No, yeah, I, mean, I, miss, I miss those days. I mean, I kind of, I'm the, from the movies, you know, I would have wanted to be there sometimes. <laughs> you like Gladiator? I love Gladiator for sure. It came on. It, I don't know what it just came on. It's HBO Max or Netflix, but I've been watching it lately. Yeah. Even the beginning when the barbarian comes and like the men should know, man should know when he's conquered. And then Russell Crowe goes to the other fucking general, that guy who turns on him. He goes, you know, would you, uh, whatever the fuck your name is, would I, you know? Oh, I, oh I, look at that. My, yeah. my glass with my nipples right now. I like that shit. <laughs> that gets me fucking going, man. Well, Marvin, uh, you know we love you, man. Uh, yes. This Saturday, uh, the 23rd uh, fight night um, at the Apex, of course, you against uh, uh, Costa. And uh, is there going to be a small crowd there, a few people let in? I think so. Yeah, they're gonna be like I just asked actually, like probably 150 to 200 people. Yeah, I mean that's how that's how good the UFC cards are because this easily could be a pay per view main event. This is a really really important fight, and it's a a, a great fight with uh, two guys at the very very top of the division. So, good luck, man. You know we'll talk to you after, and uh, this is a fight that I think everybody wants to see. 
Thank you very much, guys. Thank you. Always All a right. pleasure being here. All right, Marvin. Take care, man. Fuck yeah, Marvin. Oh, shit. You know what, Jimmy? Before I yes. forget, I had a bunch of our guys fight last week that I felt awful that I didn't mention it. Okay. You know, can I mention it now? 100%. I'm just asking to be nice. Of course I can mention it. You do what you want. Well, listen, Jimmy, uh, the, the Cerro Longo team went 5-0. and oh. All right. Wow. Between, uh, let me see. We went, this is from Stephen Lee. He's one of the fighters. I told him to write me. He goes, listen, hey, Matt, in case you're doing the show today, yeah, I told him to remind me. And I yes. We went 5-0 and oh between our two amateur fighters, Stephen Delemi, that's Stephen Lee, and that's uh, Anthony Delemi, with dominant wins. And then Diana and Jenny, that's Jenny Nadell. And Diana is this Greek girl. I'm going to get her name later. I feel, okay. I'm not going to. Something would have Now I feel bad. But no, I, don't, I don't feel bad. But you'll see. You'll look her up. Diana and Jenny. Both with KOs, Jimmy. Jenny Nadell. Longo's fucking. Longo calls it a BFF. Any his BFF. Anybody else, I get jealous. But I love Jenny. So I sure. Like, okay, we'll share Longo as both of our, our best friends. But uh, they both. I, I mean, it's amazing. Oh, by the way, in their kickboxing. <laughs> I'm doing a horrible job of this. No, you're not. Even the Lemmy, they won dominant wins. Diana and Jenny both KOs to their kickbo- in kickboxing bouts. And a body shot KO by Justin the Kid in his MMA fight. And uh, that was, um, that made me very happy. Why doesn't he write down everybody's fucking full names for me? So I just fucking, Justin Matalvo. But anyway, I like Justin's such a good kid. Justin's got three fights. And three fucking finishes. Fucking two of them by body fucking shots. Five and oh. That's really great. Oh, it's, well, yeah, yeah, it is, Jimmy. That's a great night. Oh, Jimmy, you know what I'm doing this weekend? <laughs> Why do I ask you stupid shit? Because you know I don't know. <laughs> Whatever you're doing, I'm sure you'll do well. But you know I have no idea. You have no idea. No, none. I haven't, I haven't the foggiest. I'm taking a road trip. With two young, with two young fighters, you got to see these road trips. They're funny, because it's basically other fighters. They might have like the little road trips, but I don't know if they have that whole fucking Sarah Longo sing along. Because we put some music on, and it's I need smoke, and we're we got the music blasting. But anyway, this weekend, me, and my buddy Pumi, Cage Fury champion, and uh, I love Pumi, and Stephen Lee. Another buddy of mine, I'm becoming close with Stephen. I like him. Um, we're going to take a ride down to uh, AC because uh, at the Tropicana, Jimmy, we got we got fucking we got like five guys fighting: James Gonzalez, fucking Dennis Bazooka, Dylan Montello, yeah, some other guys: Hunk Wolf, Christian, Damian Nelson. I don't know a bunch of people over there. So listen, I gotta support my guys. Sure. Hey, listen, I thought I Jimmy, I thought I was out. Jimmy, they. They pulled you back in. I, I was gonna finish the line. Oh, sorry. Got let's we'll, we'll redo it. Good. No, no, no. So, Matt, you were out. What happened, Jimmy? I once I thought I was out. Did you stay out? No, you're supposed to you answer it. Well, I want to go over the fights now. Let's go. Let's talk about the. Wait, hold on. All right, let's do it again. I won't say anything. No, I'm done. I'm done. I'm not gonna be. Yeah, you, I'll move the mic. No, because you pick on me. No. No, no, I, I mean, it was my mistake. I'll move the mic. Oh, you were out. Corner. <laughs> you were out? Oh, but with the corner. I thought I was out. And then they... <laughs> <laughs> Let's get to business, Jimmy. Okay. We got... Soon we're going to find out all about Polo Costos. Yep. Didn't highs and lows but right now i talked about my guys that won over the weekend they did yeah you did they did they did phenomenal and nas nas is another way of one and he won in another event rear naked choke third round you know listen you know i'm proud of the guys yeah um oh by the way guys get dean thomas on the show next week i was talking to him earlier and i go dean thomas why am i laughing with you so much where nobody could hear it that's right. I mean, if a tree fell in the woods, yada, 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 that it really happened. Can we please have this same conversation on air? I don't even want to catch up anymore. And he goes, okay, Matt, Sarah. 
Yeah, yeah. Don't you hate that when you're having a conversation and you're like, this would be really great on the air? 100 percent This would be great. Yeah. Uh Jimmy. Yep. A lot of good fights at the at Dana White contender series the other night. Yeah. And and we could go over those results. Or we could go over the fight card this weekend. What do you want to do? Or or we could talk about news. Jimmy, so many different things. You know what's so funny? I'm thinking about you before, and you're like, you're like, oh, I feel like a nerd with these cop with this. With these, a kid again with these things. I'm like, Jimmy, why do you feel like a kid again? Got a fucking Star Wars comic book in my That's head. nice. I'm like, Jimmy, first of all, Jimmy, the Marvel does a good job with the Star Wars comic books. Yeah, they do. He's my kid. Yeah, they do. I'm on the comic books. It's a good, Jimmy. It's a good read. Yeah. It was like, this one happened after the events of um, Star Wars, the first hope. Okay, listen, that wasn't on air, was it? No, no, I mean, uh... yes. I want it to be, Jimmy. When do I start my very own um, uh, podcast on, on nerdy shit? It's going to be called Geek, Geek Shit. Yeah. How about... Uh, Ready? Geek Shit for Matt Sarah. No, you can't oh, say Geek I, Shit. I can show my... Am I a geek if I have a Marvel fucking wedding ring? Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. A little kid gets that out of a fucking, uh, a fucking candy box, the fucking cracker box. How about this? Your podcast can be called uh, the Kimura Comic Book Guy. <laughs> <laughs> Is that a bad name? Yes, it's a horrible name. Okay, uh, it's, it's 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 borderline condescending. Uh, no, I'm trying to think of ways to combine it all. Making fun of me, Riz? No. How about? Um, Matt Sarah, comics anyone? Oh. Not, not a good name. <laughs> Actually, not. And, and what am I, am I? Am I like this? Like, anybody, how, what, what is my face when you do it? Like I'm like like you like this. <sighs> how about uh, how about Matt Sarah, comics and Kimuras? Oh, by the way, did I tell you I saw Jose Pierre? Uh, and it's like, it's weird. Like, listen, sometimes when we're on conversations, like, listen, I you know what the problem, Jimmy, the problem with me, I could be awkward because I'm the same, I'm the same kind of everywhere. So we were like, we, why are you make a face like you, you're- I'm crazy. listening. I know, I know. I, I, so I, I like- seen, When did I see him? When I went to Corner Marab, we were backstage and there's, listen, there's a lot of like, I don't know. I'm not saying like famous people, but there's like, oh, there's everybody backstage or whatever. At yeah. The, the, a lot of celebs. Yeah. So I saw George. So I was literally, the last time I saw him, we were talking about, the, we were talking about Star Wars. <laughs> so I was going to bring it up to him. But I could tell he was kind of in like the mode of like shaking, like moving around. I don't know. Did I'm you like, bring yeah, it up? We bring up the band batch or something like that. And he's like, oh, I thought I saw it in his eyes. I could have swore he looked a little nervous that I was going to bring up the geek shit. So I'm like, oh man. Didn't they know everybody heard our podcast? It's not a dirty little secret, George. Yeah. Or Jimmy, Jimmy, is it more about, about a, a time and a place? No. You should have said, look at how great this is. The force is with us. <laughs> <laughs> so embarrassing. Oh, no, that's a good one. Oh, Jimmy. Because I could tell he didn't want to talk about it. Yeah. Maybe it was just in my head he didn't want to talk. So I'm like, you should have asked him about a fight. Said, George, what do you think? Is he going to Darth Maul him or what's going to happen? Hey, George, the fight's going to be great tonight. When do you think that Obi-Wan Kenobi series is coming out, George? Remember, we, oh. we, George, why are you walking up? Wait, we talked, you talked about it on the show. Wait, come back. Faraz, Faraz and George. I don't know. Listen, I fucking, I, Jim. Well, I know what you should have done. I gotta be me. You should have looked at him and went like this. Bomb, bomb, bomb. <laughs> Bum, ba, bum. <laughs> yeah, that's the worst when, when someone doesn't want you to bring something up and then that's all you want to talk about. Hey, George, did you see the new animated series of the yeah. storm? Remember we talked about it? No, Matt, I don't know what you're uh, referring. George, that, that, that thing with those fucking stormtroopers. I don't know you. I love George. Listen to me. Uh, maybe that was in my head. Maybe he really wanted to talk about it. Yeah. In, in front of like fucking, I don't know, The Rock or whoever the fuck was back. I don't think The Rock was there. But there was other people back there. I don't, listen. 
putting it to. Yeah. I just got to be me. Honestly, you do. For better or worse, Jimmy. It's usually for better. Always for better. Not even usually. It's always for better. Let's go over some fights. Okay, buddy. Because I was, I didn't even know Bruce Leroy is back, man. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Oh, there was a good girl fight on the contenders last night, Jimmy. Who fought? Uh, Pura Pura Rodriguez defeated uh, Valeska Machado. But man, that was a good fight. That was a technical fight with those girls. Uh, Yeah, Yeah, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed that fight. That was good. And that Rodriguez is something to be said because uh, Machado is doing well too. I mean, just with the machine, had a movement, our strikes, but uh, Rodriguez was was uh, was on fire, man. And Armin, dude, I don't want to say. See, now I'm segueing right into those fights. We might as well just talk about it really quick because uh, Armin uh, Petrosin. I pronounced that right, Petros Petrosin. Petrosian or Petrosin? Um, <laughs> Armin Petrosian. <laughs> uh, wow. Did you see that kick he did, Jimmy? Did you see I that? did, yeah. That was yeah. fucking excellent. There's something about a, 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 a kick knockout. It really is like, I don't know why, but it, I mean, I guess because it just looks cool and it's a little rarer than the other stuff you see. But uh, you can't not be excited by a, a head kick. You can't ever not be excited by that. It's funny, dude. I was just playing my VR. It has nothing to do with this, but I got a snipe kill and I got it right in the head. And I'm like, there's something about a snipe kill when I get my op. Just like a head kick, like you appreciate it. Is that not a good analogy, my VR? No, I know what you mean. Yeah, it's there's something like who, but again, I also, you know, I love kicks more than anything. And a good solid middle of the uh of the of the guts body kick who was just throwing a bunch of heavy body kicks it was a fight we watched and we talked about do you remember it was it was a fight in the last month or two uh where there was some beauty i want to i want to say uh left leg body kicks and i can't remember who threw them um was it the volkanovsky fight i don't know jimmy i the only fights have been i've seen since then might have, was it Randy Brown? Maybe it was uh, Randy Brown. Yo, I'm watching Into the Badlands. I don't remember. Yeah. Badlands? Borderlands? Badlands. Uh, I'm liking it. What is it? It's ba- I mean, the only thing that confused me is in the future. I got to watch the very, very like beginning again, like the monologue type thing. Is it called a monologue in a movie? Uh, yes. Okay, thank God. Uh, I don't want to sell it in the cell. But of like why the guns are like banned. Because they did like a bunch of guys, they call them clippers. They got like, like the enforcers. They got like, um, there's like different like gangs and like a baron runs this section and that section. And it's in the future. And like, I'm doing a horrible job of explaining it, but it's, uh, I don't know, they all fight with swords and it's very, um, it's almost got like a supernatural feel to it. Cause right. there's one kid in it who gets cut he gets like his eyes turned black and he gets like these fucking superpowers. Like he's like fucking just killing everybody. So I don't know. It's got this weird, like mystic thing to it. But my one thing I don't get is what do you mean? Guns are outlawed. What the fuck? Everybody's an outlaw. What can't they just make a fucking gun? And just, why is everybody running around with swords? So I'm a little confused. Uh, yeah. That. Yep. <laughs> I just love the patience with me. Can we get Paulo Paulo Costa? Costa? Yeah. Our first time talking to him. Follow. I'm good. And yeah, okay. sorry, guys. Sorry, I, I'm a, a little bit lost here. Uh, it's okay. <laughs> it's okay. Do, are, do, go ahead, Jimmy. I would say do the Zoom, the, the phone interviews are weird, right? They're a little harder. It'll be, it'll be Jimmy. How are you, Jimmy? It's, I'm it's good, good, buddy. No, oh, nice. Uh, it, it's good to be here with you guys. Thank you. We, we haven't seen you in a long time now. Now, what was that? Were you injured? Because I know you did the thing that the transplant with your hair, which looks yeah, I did. As, looks a bald, good. as a bald man. I'm very jealous, Paulo. Because <laughs> but... yeah, man, do 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 you too? Do, do that. Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. I, I recommend. I recommend. <laughs> I tapped. Not... I tapped out. I tapped out with this a long time ago. I tapped out. But, okay. But tell me, man, is that why you took some time off? Sorry. Why have we not seen you lately? Because oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You know, after my surgery, surgery 
I did a, a very complicated, I did twice surgery on my left biceps. Uh, since since I, I did that, I'm trying to get my, you know, my whole movement to my hook, especially to my hook. And I, I, I have been training very hard, very hard to, to get my old hook, you know, with the yeah. same speed, the same uh, technique. And uh, I think this is what make me be a little bit long oh, off, wow. off the cage, I think. Did you, did you tear your bicep throwing a punch? Yes. Me too. Me, I used to look. See, this is me. No one. <laughs> yeah, I can see. Oh, yeah, yeah. You yeah. did all the surgeries I should have did. You took care of. You don't have a mutant arm. You got a full fed hair. I don't take care of myself, Paul. Mm -hmm. I got yeah, one man. bicep, fucking bald, short. But listen, I throw in shorts. I mean, listen. <laughs> <laughs> but now it feels good. The punching, it feels good. Yeah, yeah. You know, I, I'm. I, I could say. The, the just the hook this yeah. this movement you know uh is 90 percent yeah but i can use that i can knock out people with 90 percent i think <laughs> now, and you and uh marvin we we just talked to marvin vittori and uh, you guys are uh again both dangerous because you're both coming off a title loss um what what was your mindset after that and uh and what, what what process did you go through mentally after that? Yeah, man, it's not easy. You know, you you come back after a loss, especially to me because it's my only loss on my, my career. And um, I I need to to fight with my personal demos. You know, on my hand, my my head to not be frustrated because what more frustrated me on that episode is is extra fight, not exactly on, on that fight because you lost or win, be part of the sport, you know? It's two, two people fight and one will lose or, or draw, but uh, normally one win one one and another people lost. But yeah. what happened before the fight is more frustrating, frustrating to me, you know. But I'm I'm good. I'm look for forward. And I think I could handle good uh well handle well with this uh frustrating that I I had. Are you going to, because it is your first loss, and I know that you're going to want to come out and have a great performance. So are you being, telling yourself not to come out in the first and try to do too much? Uh, or or what, what are you, what is your thoughts about going in um, this first fight after that loss? Like, um, are you worried about, you don't want to try to do too much early just to get that back? No, I, I think, I, 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 I actually, I actually think about not get pressure, just be myself, fresh, you know, light, and explode every, you know, all my power on on him you know, on the cage and do my best performance ever. Just this. I'm not thinking about nothing more. Just this fight. I think this is the best way I can do. And training camp went swimmingly. It went well. Training for this fight, you feel? It, where yeah. did you train for this fight? Where? Huh? Where did you train for this fight? I trained in Brazil and I see contagion. I, you know, uh, I, I did uh, a, a good camp there. I bring one good, good sparring to help me and my coach. It's close of my 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 house. I we have a, a big cage there, and I I did a good game. What do you expect from Marvin um, coming off uh, his, uh, his his decision loss? What are you expecting out of him, and and how do you think he's going to approach you? Mm. I didn't figure about that yet, but 
I, I always, I, 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 I always like to think about my opponent. We we bring the the uh, the walls uh, of the more the more dangerous version of him. You know, to be more difficult to me. I, I think about that because this make me bring my best. You know, when I think my my opponent will bring his best, I try to bring my best out. So, so I'm think about, I'm think that. Hey, Paulo, I'm sorry, Jimmy. Only because it's, it's it's Paulo's first time on this this program. For our, our listeners, we like something unrelated to MMA. Is there any hobbies you have besides training that people should know? You sing, you dance. What do you do, Paulo? Reading books. What do you? Like to do uh, what, what I like to do, like a hobby, a hobby besides so training. Video games, ah, I like to do. <laughs> I like video that. Video games is my favorite hobby. You know, I I leave the gym, think about what play, what, what game I will play. Ah, Call of Duty. Mm -hmm. What do you like? What kind of game do you like? Man, I I love Call of Duty, but I I'm I used to play more on console. You know, uh, 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 so Call of Duty, yeah. I think it's not this game on, on first person. I think you cannot uh, control very well on, on the joystick. So yeah. I prefer on on computer. But my, my computer is is off. Is uh, is not good. It's broken. So I I use more the, the console. In, in the console, I, I like more like a RPG games like that ah. and football, soccer. It, uh, they play the games uh, which is better to play on joystick. Yes. Yeah. Ah, that's awesome. Jimmy, I'm not <laughs> the only one, Jimmy. No, not at all. <laughs> um, did you ever try, Matt got me to buy a uh, virtual reality, the Oculus Quest uh, VR helmet. Have you tried that? No, I, I haven't tried, but no, no, no. sorry. Uh, I'm lying. Yes, I, I tried one time. I try one time that I, I put that and uh, I see it like a, a simulator of, of a race car. But ah. that shakes so much, shakes so much that I feel bad. <laughs> Did you get sick, I, nauseous? <laughs> yes, man, I felt that. Yeah, 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 shit. Yeah, it takes a little getting used to, uh, but the motion makes me a little nauseous too. Um, uh. Yeah, I, I get a little. I couldn't do that game, Matt. What's the game you play in there, Matt? Population one. Ooh, Which one? Love it. Which Population one, one on Oculus oh. Quest two, and it's a squad game. So you uh. you and your squad of three take out all the other squads. A battle royale. Nice, nice. On console or PC or, or computer? Uh, it's uh, it's on the 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 Oculus Quest two, which is uh. It's the VR set. It's the um, so you can get it at Best Buy. It's you don't need a personal computer. No. Nice, nice. I I, I will save this to, to try. So much fun, dude! And you can bring bring. I when I travel, I bring it with me to Abu Dhabi to Vegas. I oh. put it right in my my carry on. You know, because you're quarantined, you fucking do the thing. <laughs> fucking fun <laughs> <laughs> well paulo look uh, uh it really this is a fight everybody wants to see i told marvin the same thing you and victoria is a, you guys are he's a he's a completely uh different matchup for you than uh than israel uh his style of fighting um and this is just you guys are two people that ev this is a, a clash everybody wants um so good luck on saturday man this is a great great fight jimmy thank you very much i appreciate you being here matt Thank you very, very much for, for the time, for the, for the, the you, you tip for, for this game. I will look for this game. Thank you very much, guys. <laughs> I'm, I, I, and I, I love, what, I, I love uh, Matt when I, I saw you hang with bad people on Instagram and, oh. you know, and, and, and mountain of him on, on the, the, on the club or, or bar, man, yeah, you, you, are, you, are, you are a real, real hero. Thank you, oh man, that Paulo. Thank you so much, man. I appreciate that coming from you. That, that means a lot. Thank yeah. you, buddy. Thank, Thank you, guys. Bye. All right, have a great fight, man. Good talking to you. All the best, buddy. Bye, buddy. Hi, Tracy. How you doing? I'm doing well. I How got these. Doing? 
I got these cards. I literally, I opened, I did open uh, one and cheat and look, and they're really, really great. And what I love about them is there's different, it's almost like when you would buy the old Topps baseball cards, it was just one style for the whole set. But these have really different styles and almost like different collections in the collection. Exactly right. You nailed it. Like Chronicles is such a different product for us because it's more or less our lab to kind of test out new ideas, new designs, new concepts, and we kind of throw them all into this Chronicles melting pot. And a lot of times what you'll find is that some of the coolest cards in there then become their own standalone products in future years. I just opened this up and this is what I have in one little pack. I got Kamaru. I got John Jones. I got a Habib. I have a a Shemaev and I also have black uh michael chandler i guess that's a series with the uh the silver lettering these all look different and they're all really really great and high quality well i'm glad you like them i i often joke around that i have add and i do and so i get easily distracted but chronicles is the one product that keeps my attention from the first pack until the last oh look at this one hold on jimmy okay this one's like extra thick what do i have here tracy Oh, that is, congrats, on, congrats on the Panini belt, by the way. <laughs> Thank you. I'm, a, I'm the strap holder. So that is a national treasure, one of our highest end brands across all sports. And that is a special, um, as you mentioned, Matt, extra Ooh. thick. It looks like, is that Amanda? It feels like it could stop a bullet. This thing is thick. Yeah. <laughs> I'll build a house of these things. Yeah, I think it would be pretty sturdy. Yeah, that's a, uh, a pretty rare insert. Yeah, it's Amanda. Product. I have a great one too, an Adesanya, which is, um, it says a season ticket, Israel Adesanya, and uh, also a Gilbert Burns, like these really hard plastics, like a credit card, um, <laughs> a rookie, uh, a rookie in stars, uh, Israel Adesanya. Uh, this is really, really good, man. Really good. And that's another thing is you'll find out that like, you may get two or three of the same fighters in each pack, but they're completely different. Uh, different designs it's a totally different like uh, yeah a a part of a different grouping or a group a different set and no one is going to complain if they get two john jones cards or two israel adesanya cards um and i like that you're doing like like uh you know like uh, different sets because it kind of gives you more leeway and it gives people more to collect as opposed to just one set of fighters exactly right jim you nailed it do you ever sprinkle in like a hall of famer in a card or something like as a like an extra prize yeah, they're, they're actually Hall of Famers in that Chronicles uh, product as well. Oh, I'm going to go through all mine today and look for myself. We need more Matt Sarah cards is what we need. That's, I mean, I wasn't going to bring that up. Well, I was hoping my friend would, but he's... He would. <laughs> well, you didn't let me get to it. I was going to suggest a, a pod, a UFC, uh, a podcast card where it's just uh, one co-host defending the other co-host from being beaten up. Like maybe that's what it is. I'm in the street and Matt is defending me. That would be perfect. You guys are gonna. You guys can, would be right at home in our product development department. I think we need to get that done. I love this. Now, do you guys sell these by the pack or by the box or both? Uh, by the box, and we have a hobby edition that's kind of uh, just hobby shop, like a traditional trading card shop. So our online store at PaniniAmerica.net. And then we have the mass retail stuff that you can find at Target, Walmart. The same general product in terms of the card designs and things, but you might have better odds with um, autographs and autograph memorabilia cards than hobby. Can you talk about the autographs? How does that work? Uh, how do you get, auto- are they uh, inserted in, in random packs? Yes, sir, exactly right. I think Chronicles, you get two autographs a box and we, we do autograph deals through uh, the UFC with as many fighters as we can or we have a list that we select from and, and we go and execute those autograph deals. And then we, we put those autographs in our products across uh, the entire year. So uh, whether that's Prism or Select or Chronicles, and then the, the product that follows Chronicles is Immaculate, which is a higher end uh, product. But yeah, we work directly with the UFC to get those uh, autograph deals done. I'm, I'm listening to you, but I'm literally just looking at these cards. Yeah. Like I'm eight. Like I really like these cards. Very, yeah. Very um, fun. Nate Diaz. These are great. I like the hashtag. Who do you collect? Yes, Matt. Thank you. Uh, that's one we've been using. We, we actually have it patented. Um, <laughs> and we it's use that act. just about on every social media post we ever do. It's on shirts. It's on our boxes. And, um, 
it's a rhetorical question, obviously, but I'd like to think a lot of people collect Matt Serra. Man, me too. I would like to think that. Yeah, I think there should be a Matt card. But I would like to think that. You guys need, if Unfiltered doesn't have a card, we need to get that changed ASAP. Jimmy. I agree. We could do like action photos. Like I'll look like I'm asking a tough question. <laughs> yeah, Matt. Yeah, you could be shocked. You yeah, can't Matt's believe shocked. what we just heard. We're going to... We're going to get that done, gentlemen. I've never been on a card before. So now, how long have these been out? So Chronicles is our newest UFC product. It just came out. I think it just hitting retail this week. It hit hobby shops about two weeks ago. I, these, it's amazing. I'm 53, and I've collected baseball cards and football cards. And I stopped collecting years ago. And then every one of these you open, it's like – it, it makes you feel like you're you're 15 years old. It really does. Like, I'm a collector. I like the way cards smell. Like, uh, yeah. I have to have every one because I'm a little obsessive. <laughs> and uh, they're probably going to be worth money, to be honest with you. These are gorgeous cards. Yeah, I love to hear you say that because there's that beauty in that, that kind of return to innocence, if you will, of opening a pack and you're immediately thrust back to your, when you were 10, 11, 12, 13, opening cards with your brother or your friends at school, your sister, whatever. And, and that never leaves, no matter how valuable the cards are, no matter how mature you become, that feeling remains. And can you explain, how does the autograph work? There's a little something, I just got an autographed Jacare card, which is really awesome. Um, how does that work? You have something covering it, it looks like. So, we, so the, those are actually autograph stickers. And what happens in many cases, we try to get as many on-card autographs sure. as we can. And some products have more on-card than others. But when we can't, it, it's a lot more convenient, easier to execute. If we send the fighter sheets of stickers, yeah. they sign, they send them back, and we adhere them to the card and insert them that way. Yeah, that's the same thing. I mean, it's, as far as I'm concerned, it's the same thing. It's the fighter signed it, and it got put on the card. Look at this. This is a... a a Habib card that is shaped differently. You guys are really uh, shaped almost like a glove. Really great job, man. A Crown Royale. Jim, Matt, you can find them at PaniniAmerica.net. Uh, you can find them on the UFC store, and you can find them in Target, Walmart, and Nash Recall outlets like that. I am so appreciative of the time. Thank you both, Matt, Jim. Thank you both, and we'll talk to you again soon. Yeah, anytime, man. Keep up the good work. Uh, they're thank really, really both. great, and good luck thank with them, okay? You. Thank, Thank you, you, gentlemen. Okay, buddy. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. You know who I've been playing Population One with? I, you don't know. So I'm not going to say that. But I'm going to say, guess who? No, that's stupid, too. Hey, let me tell you who I've been playing Population One with. Who? Kevin Casey. Oh, okay. In Casey. He's a Hicks and Gracie black belt. He's married to Muhammad Ali's daughter, by the way. It has nothing to do with anything. Layla Ali or another one of his daughters? No, not Layla. The, okay. uh, another daughter. Oh, that's nice. But I play with him on there. And we murk some. We we do fucking okay. Yeah, yeah. Me, him, my buddy Robbie C. Uh, Chef Rob on there. I know that guy's since fourth grade. Good guy. Good guy. But he's a blue belt. I teach him. So okay. me and Kevin, we're, we're black belt. So if we see a, a gun we like, we, you know, hey, we, we, yeah. we, you know, hey, Robbie, leave the gun for me or uh, Sure. But anyway, Jimmy, we got fights this weekend. Yeah, we do. Now, our show is done. Uh, what else you want to talk about? We'll talk over the weekend. We always do. We always text. Um, and I'm glad that the fight, let's just promote the fight before we go. Um, obviously, it is uh, Vittori uh, Costa and it's uh, UFC fight night. It's Saturday at the Apex. Let me see what time that starts. I believe it, prelims are 1 uh, Eastern and uh, 4 p.m. Eastern on ESPN+. Plus. That's the main event, uh, 4 p.m. Uh, New York time. Uh, main card, sorry, not main event. And then the uh, prelims, 1 p.m. Check them out. A great, great card, an amazing main event. And I'll talk to you over the weekend. Jimmy, I miss you already. I'll talk to you soon, buddy. All right, pal. See you soon. Goodbye, everybody. Bye.